In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a positive and negative bar chart here. And you can see here, one is positive and the other one is negative. But in the negative, well, it's negative here. In the tooltip, I create it in such a way that you will see here a positive value. So let's start to explore how we can create this kind of bar chart where we have the positive and negative match together. In this video, I'm going to answer one of the viewer's question, which is how to create a positive and negative bar chart in Chart.js. So this question came from one of my other videos about how to hide grid nights in Chart.js. And if you scroll down, you can see here this question came from Matanabe Yaske. So a special thank you to Yaske for asking this question. And this is what Yaske asked. And we had a whole conversation. I first didn't understand correctly what it was, but eventually he explained it properly. And now I understand it well. Basically, what he wanted was a positive and negative bar chart where the bars are based on one line. So let's start and do that one. So we have the positive and negative, one up, one down, but they're all together. And one. So luckily, this is quite straightforward to do. So let's start to work on, on this. First of all, to do this, we need to make sure you go to charges3.com, getting started. Go there, we're going to get a demo code. And if you see this here, for some reason, I get my Google Chrome error here. And Firefox works fine, but Google Chrome sadly doesn't. Anyway, let's copy all of this code here. And once I copy this, and if you want to understand the code, make sure you watch this video here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste this in here. And once I did that, I'm going to cut this out, put it in here, and I'm going to paste this in here. All right, so once I save that, refresh, we have now our bar chart. So to do this, it's very, very easy if we're going to duplicate our data set. What I really want to do here basically is to stack them up on top of each other. However, in this case, I don't stack them up as a positive value but one is negative, other one is positive. So let's first duplicate our data set here so we can see immediately how this will work. Here's basically another way to do it as well, but I don't recommend you to do that. I thought that would be the best way first, but I realized that is not the way. I'm going to show you later on why. Comma, paste this in here. All right, so what I want to do here is, and this, I would just say this will be green, and this will be red, and so the red is basically this color here. So I'm going to copy this, just paste that in there and do this one here as well. And this will be one. And then here, I'm going to grab the green color and then overwrite everything else here, except for this alpha value, put it on one. And I'm going to make this all a negative value. By doing so, if I save this now, refresh, it works like this and we don't want this we want them stacked on each other and i definitely want to have these lines here so what i'm going to do here is a border skip comma border skip and we set this on false we want to make sure that that is being uh, removed or we want to remove the border skip because we want to show the borders also at the bottom so if we save this here you can see and now what i'm referring to the bottom is basically the starting point here and there so if i refresh there you are. So now we have them. And now what I want to do is to merge them together into one single bar. Scroll down here, or let's do one more thing here. Let's do an X value here. And this X value we say here, the position will be at the very top. So that will be a bit more better. Save that. Refresh. Now this moves up. So this is a bit more cleaned out. And then of course here, stack them together. To stack them, uh, we have to check which one we really want to stack. We want to stack basically the Y level of the bar. So we're going to say here, stack equals true, comma, save, refresh. Oh, uh, apparently it's not Y, sorry, I thought it was the Y, it's the X level. So I can remove this one here, or just cut this out, put it in here, enter, paste, save, refresh, and there you are. So with this, basically you are able to stack them on here. So what I want to do as well, maybe you don't want to have this negative here. You want to have this still positive. We can uh, create what I call a cosmetic adjustment. So it's artificial adjustment. So let's do that one just as an extra exercise, because that might be something you want to do. So once say plugins and in here, tooltip, and it should be tooltip, not tooltop. And then in here, what we're going to do here is I'm going to say here filter. And basically what the filter will do is we're going to change here the, uh, oh, sorry, not, not, it's not the filter at all. We're going to do here callback, callbacks. So 
So make sure you type in callbacks here. And on this callbacks, what I'm going to do here is the following. I'm going to pinpoint the label. And the reason why is I want to make sure that this label, you can see here the negative 6. But maybe we don't want to show you a negative 6. We just want to show value, a value of 6. So let's convert this. So what we're going to do here is label. And then this label column, I'm going to say a context. Then here will be the, a uh, function arrow expression. And let's do a console law dot context. Save that. Refresh. And it doesn't work, probably we're forgetting somewhere a comma. If you can see here, make sure you have a comma or else it breaks. Save that. And then here, that's fine. All right, we can save this. Refresh. There you are. So now, of course, it doesn't show anything. But our tooltip should show a lot of information and including the positive or negative values. If I go on here, you can see here we get the negative value and the negative value is a raw. So what I want to extract is the raw value here, but I want to make sure that this is converted into a positive value. So how do we do this? Well, let's start to do this right now. Most important thing here eventually is we need to know the data index or well, not even, we don't have to do this one. We just can grab here the raw value. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, that's in here. Basically, I need here this dot raw, but I'm going to say here return. And then if I do this, you will see it will show you immediately. Save this, refresh. All right, so now it grabs here the value, and we can put a text in here as well. So we could say here, well, uh, template literal. So I'm using backticks. And backticks is just below your keyboard. And then I'm going to say here red, or sorry, no, this should not be red, but it should be based on the label. Let's, let's do a console log one more time. Save that. Refresh console log. This here right now. Don't worry about that. We'll fix that right right away. Uh, the label and then what is that? The data set. The data set and the label here. All right. Let's grab that. We're going to say here dot context dot data set all right in the data set we get the label so we're going to say red or whatever it would be we're going to say here dollar sign that and then we have here another dollar sign like this but then i want to fix this one so what i need to do here i guess this feature should maybe move out constant then we say here net value or the net and then what i want to do here is the following I'm just going to convert this. I will say math.abs means absolute value. What will happen is it will convert every negative value into a positive. And every positive value will be basically just gets the integer value of it, no matter what what else we have on there. So we can say here this value will be dollar sign net. Save that. Refresh. And now you can see here, even though it's negative here, cosmetically, we have created it as a positive value. And this is basically how we can create and combine it together. We can do it also in the, uh, specifically in the uh, floating. But what we have with floating is if you would have like these kind of values, that's with floating. It's basically this value, you put like these two, like an array. These arrays will be also shown in the tooltip, and then you need to do a lot of adjustments on that. So that's why I don't recommend that. So anyway, save this, refresh, there we are. So maybe you want to learn even some other topics. I will highly recommend you, maybe, because I'm talking about floating bar chart. And floating bar chart can be very interesting, and this is one of them as well. So if you're interested in that, try and explore the floating, horizontal floating bar chart here.